Hi, my name is Rachel and you're watching the Rachelistic channel. Welcome back to my channel. So if you've been following along for this entire month and you would know that it is Autism Month or Autism Acceptance Month and I've been doing videos this entire month related to autism and autism acceptance. So for the final video this month, I decided to share some autistic-led organizations that you can support and continue to support throughout the entire year because autism acceptance is an everyday thing and not just during the month of April. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So the first autistic-led organization I want to share with you is called Autistic Self-Advocacy Network, or ASAN, ASAN for short. I'm not actually sure how you're supposed to say it, but I just say ASAN, so yeah. <laughs> so ASAN was founded in 2006 in New Jersey in response to the lack of autistic voices in the national dialogue on autism. So they felt that there weren't enough autistic people being included in the discussions on autism in the U.S. And so they started ASEN. So the founders believed that autistics would be better served by empowering and supporting them instead of just trying to find like a cure. They became more widely known in December of 2007 after they had a successful letter writing protest, which led to the removal of these ransom notes billboards that compared autistic children to like being kidnapped or they compared autism to a kidnapper stealing children. It, that's so like that's so intense and so like over the top like whoever made that needs to like chill like calm down like autism is not that bad chill <laughs> chill <laughs> since they started they've grown into an organization that does a lot they do advocacy programming in leadership development technical assistance, and they have employment or help people with employment opportunities. Um, they do publications and research, um, public policy analysis, and education. So they've grown over the years into this, into a big organization that does a lot. And I'm pretty sure that they're like the most well-known autistic led organization. So that's pretty cool. So some of the things that they do are policy and legal advocacy. And so they work on laws and policies that affect autistic and other disabled people. And they work to make sure that those laws and policies are being enforced fairly and correctly. They also make educational resources and so they have a resource library on their website with a lot of books and toolkits and just lots of information to help autistic people and the parents or caregivers of autistic people. <laughs> and they also have like a whole like section on Autism Acceptance Month with like information on like what it is and things that you can do. So I thought that was really cool. And so they also create advocacy tools. And so they have lots of resources for people who want to learn how to self-advocate. And they also have leadership training for autistic self-advocates. So for people, for autistic people who are already self-advocating, they have leadership training for them so they can learn how to help other people do the same. That was a bit on, you know, who they are and what they do. If you want to learn more about them, you can check out their website or you can find them on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I'll have links to all of this in my description below so you can check them out if you want to. 
So the second organization I want to share with you is called Autistic Women and Non-Binary Network, or AWN, or ON for short. I've been saying ON. I don't know if people say that, but that's what I've been saying. So they provide community support and resources for autistic people of marginalized genders. Their target group is autistic people of marginalized genders, so that includes women, girls, transgender people, non-binary people, two-spirit people, and etc, etc. They have a whole list on their website, so yes. <laughs> yeah, and they also focus a lot on intersectionality, so that is you know, people who are a part of more than one marginalized group. So that would be someone like myself, who is a woman, Black, and autistic. So that's three marginalized groups right there. <laughs> yeah. So some things that they are doing are, they have a blog where they talk about all these issues. They also have, they do webinars where they have like panels or like performances that are centering disabled and neurodivergent people so yeah really people that don't always have a voice in national discussions on stuff so they like to feature those people on their webinars and stuff they also have like a fiscal sponsorship that supports intersectional grassroots events and charitable projects. They also do a lot of education and outreach, so just teaching people about like autism and neurodiversity and intersectionality. And another thing that I thought was really cool on their website is that they have an ongoing list of gynecologists who offer accessible and sensory friendly care. I thought that was pretty cool. So far, they have gynecologists from like 20 states and they have a few in Canada in BC and New Brunswick and they have one in Germany, which I thought was pretty cool. So if you are in the States, you can check it out and, and see if there are, if, if they have any in the state that you live in. Or if you're in Canada, in New Brunswick or in BC, you can check it out. Or if you're in Germany, you can check it out. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> if you want to learn more about them, you can find them on their website. Or you can find them on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. So yeah, again, I'll have it all linked in the description below. So this is my favorite one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> It is my favorite one though, it really is. Okay, so the third organization I have to share today is not necessarily an autistic led organization, but it is led by people who are non speaking or have limited speaking. So it does relate to autistic people and they do help a lot of all, a lot of autistic people, but it's not specifically just autistic people. So they are called Communication First, and fun fact, <laughs> they are the only nonprofit organization in the U.S. that is dedicated to protecting and advancing the civil rights of people with speech-related disabilities. So that's pretty cool. So the people that they help are autistic people, like I said, and other people with speech-related disabilities, so things like aphasia, cerebral palsy, Huntington's disease, selective mutism, Tourette's syndrome, etc, etc. They have like a whole list on their website if you want to look through it all. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So some of the things that they do are working to protect and advance the rights and autonomy, opportunities, and dignity of people with these speech-related disabilities. They also work on getting communication tools, supports, and accommodations in like a variety of settings. So like, you know, in like educational environments, employment places, in housing places, judicial places, you know, just like in a variety, like in like a variety of places so that 
you know, when people go to different places, they can have the tools or the support that they need to do what they need to do. So they're also working on improving early identification and interventions so that children can go to kindergarten with all of the communication tools that they need, which I think is really important. They're really just doing like a lot of things to help non-speaking people just to live and thrive in this world. <laughs> on their website, they, they like share like literally like everything that they're working on and that they've done so far. So you can check that out if you want to know more. Some other things that they do is that they provide training on disability rights and advocacy for people. So <laughs> this is my favorite part. So they also made a short film called Listen and it features non-speaking autistic people and it was made in response to Sia's movie called Music which was not good which is a disaster in my opinion but you know if you have not seen their short film called Listen then you should check it out because I thought it was really good and like really powerful I'm gonna try and put the link in this video if I can if I can't it will be in the description box so you should check it out if you haven't already or if you have you should just watch it again because it's good so as you can see I am in different clothes right now my phone has been acting weird so like a little part of this video is going to be me in different clothes and then it will go back to me wearing the clothes I was wearing before so yeah just warning you <laughs> so where I left off I was talking about communication first and the last thing I want to say about them is just where you can find them and so you can find them on their website or and they're also on Facebook Twitter LinkedIn and Instagram so the next two organizations I'm going to talk about are in Canada because I'm in Canada and so I thought I would add in some Canadian autism organizations. So the first one it's called Autistics for Autistics or A4A for short and they were formed in 2017 by autistic activists in Ontario. And so they are an international affiliate affiliate of ASAN. So they basically work towards the same goals that ASAN is doing, but in Canada. So A4A has a chapter in Ontario, in New Brunswick, and they are working to have one in Alberta as well. So yeah, they're spreading more, I guess you could say. So some of the things they do are that they are very engaged in community education, events, activism, and advocating for reform to Canadian autism policy. So their main focus as an organization is really just advocating for the federal government to consult autistic self advocacy advocacy groups when making policies and laws that affect autistic people. So they really just want autistic people to be in the room and a part of the decision when laws and stuff are being made that affect us. So they focus on school inclusion, employment, housing, and access to medical care. So those are kind of their main focus areas. Some other things that they have on their website are resources about autism and self-advocacy if you want to learn more about it. And they also have a Facebook page where you can find information about meetups and political activism things and just other events that they might be having. So yeah, if you're in Canada, I guess you could check it out. Yeah, if you want to learn more about them, you can check out their website. Well, and they're also on Twitter and Facebook, like I just said. So yeah, it'll all be in my description box below. 
So the second one is called Autistics United Canada. And so they were founded in 2014 as ASAN Vancouver. So they were a one of the Canadian chapters of ASAN. And then in 2017, they combined with other Canadian ASAN chapters to make Autistics United Canada. And so they again, are still an international affiliate of ASAN. And so like A4A, they work to to do the same things. So some of the main things they do is that they promote the inclusion of autistic people in conversations and decisions that affect us. So very similar to A4A and ASAN and everything. So now it's going to go back to where the other clothes that I was wearing before so yay so they're basically the same as A4A in that they are really just working to have autistic voices in the room when you know decisions are being made that affect autistic people so they also uh, work to build connections in the autistic community and to like foster autistic identity and pride So their main focus as an organization is self-advocacy and autonomy, autistic well-being, and cultural change. So some other things that they do are workshops for like companies and businesses, which I think is pretty cool. So they have three. One of them is an introduction to neurodiversity. The next is one about intersectionality and autism. So Like, you know, how autistic people can be a part of more than one marginalized group. And third is an introduction to disability justice. So I think that's pretty cool. And so they also do a neurodiversity library in Vancouver. When I was on their website, they said that it was closed for now due for COVID. But I think that they're planning on opening it up again soon. But basically in that library, they have like STEM or fidget toys and books about like neurodiversity. And their goal for that library is really to, to make like STEM toys and fidget toys more accessible to everybody. And um, also to like help normalize the use of like STEM and fidget toys so that when people are using them, it's not like such a big deal and people are like, you know just extra about it they just you know want it to be more normalized so yeah I think that's a pretty cool idea of a thing to do yeah and so on their website they just have more resources about autism and neurodiversity if people want to learn more about those things so if you want to learn more about them you can check out their website um, and you can also find them on Facebook Twitter and Tumblr so the next two the last two organizations i have to talk about are in the uk the uk is like the third the top i don't even know how to say it the third most place i guess that people are from who watch my videos so i decided to find some in the uk and also because i have family in the uk so i'm kind of biased so the first one is called Autistic Inclusive Meets and or AIM for short and their main focus is to create social groups that are more inclusive and accommodating to autistic people and so their organization has multiple play groups and social groups for children and adults and yeah they can come to their groups and try new activities and meet other autistic people um, yeah, and just have a good time. <laughs> Another thing that they do is campaigning and protests for various issues and causes that affect autistic people. So for example, in 2020, they did a protest against an anti-vaccine or an anti-vaccination film that labeled autistic people as vaccine damage and like basically like, you know, spreading misinformation about people being autistic or getting autism from vaccines which is like not even true so yeah they protest they protested against that which was awesome so they also 
has a chapter that is coming soon to the U.S. So if you are in the U.S., you should stay tuned for that if you're interested. So if you want to learn more about them, you can check out their website or you can find them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So the very last organization I have to talk to you about is called Autistic UK. So they believe in social inclusion, self-advocacy, equality and diversity, and working in an autism-informed and trauma-informed way. So they have some projects that they are working on and are doing. And so the first one is called Autistic Women's Empowerment Project, or AWE for short. And they're just, you know, working to empower autistic women and working to make sure that the rights of autistic women are being upheld. And their other project is called Autistically Speaking, and it is a training program, an autism training program that they have that is completely run by autistic people. And so they feel like, you know, having autistic or having autism trainings that are run by non-autistic people that are like really just like textbook information and pretty like dry and like really distanced from, I guess, autism itself is like not really helpful. So they created their own autism training program that is run by autistic people so that people can learn about autism from actually autistic people and really hear the firsthand, I guess, experiences and like what it really can look like instead of just like, you know, hearing it from like a third party where it's like pretty distance. So like a lot of the other websites, they have a blog where they also talk more about autism issues and they have lots of resources that help people learn more about autism and neurodiversity. So if you want to learn more about them, you can check out their website or you can find them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Like all the other organizations I talked about, you, I will have their links to everything in the description so you don't have to search too hard. Just check out the description and you can find it if you're interested. So that's all the organizations but before I close off this video I just want to first of all say thank you to everybody who has been sticking with me this month and um, watching my videos and subscribed and liked and commented. It's means a lot to me and it's really nice to see all the comments and stuff that people are saying and so yeah thanks so I want to let you guys know that for the next two weeks you will not see a video from me <laughs> when this video is posted I will be on a trip so I'm not going to be able to like film and post a video obviously and then when I come back I'm gonna need like at least a week to like recover and get my life together again to post another video so just I'm just warning you that you won't see a post from me for two weeks. I am hoping to have a video posted on the 18th of May so stay tuned. If I don't have a video on that day then you have my full permission to come at me in the comments. <laughs> just know that I'm not like I haven't disappeared like I'm just going on a trip and I need to I need some extra time to recover so yeah May 18th I should be back so with that being said that brings us to the end of this video if you liked it then please hit the like button so that more people can see it and if you have anything that you like to say or if you know of any other autism-led organizations that are maybe are in a different country or in the countries that I mentioned, it doesn't matter, just comment it down below so that we can all see and check them out. Yeah, if you enjoy watching my videos, then please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when I post my next video, which should be May 18th. Okay, okay, okay. 
I'm saying a date because I need people to hold me accountable. I need something to hold me accountable. So, yeah, because unless I'm just, yeah. Anyways, back to the subject at hand. As always, stay Rachelistic or whatever your name is, Istic. And I'll see you in the next video, May 18th. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye.